Welcome to r slash malicious compliance, where we share stories from people conforming to the letter but not the spirit of a request. And today we have three great stories, so subscribe, hit the like button, and let's begin. The first story. Bully from school beat me up. I see him at my job six years later. He breaks the law and is now in prison. The second story. General manager was fired because he ordered me to follow a store rule, and it did a lot of damage to the store. The third story. Manager introduced a new key policy, which was not liked by the employees and took a lot of time. It was soon cancelled. The first story is, High school bully fired and arrested six years later. Backstory. I went to school in a predominantly white area and being white myself I had it pretty easy. Parents who cared for me and my activities, friends who respected each other, and all around a normal HS experience. Not really important, just want to paint the picture. Like all high schools, I was bullied. Not a big surprise. I'm your generic nerdy white boy with glasses. I had a small friend group and generally never caused problems. Where it begins. There was this group of popular kids in my school who were on the football and basketball team and always caused trouble. Whether it be fights or bullying, they never got expelled and were what we called super seniors. Students who get held back in their senior and junior year until they graduate or turn 19. They had a bully boner for my friends and me, but it never phased us. We were used to it over the years. This was our senior year and we were all trying our best to maintain our grades and whatnot when I started a class called Engineering Physics second semester. I took AP Physics the year before, and my teacher recommended it to me since he also taught that class. I noticed very early on that it was taken as a blow-off elective for people who thought you just build cool stuff and pass. Needless to say it was, but the tests were physics-based. So we took them with partners. One day I got paired with one of my friendly neighborhood bullies, who we'll call Chad. Now I knew he slacked off in class and didn't really care because he just took the class to be with his friends. But they were smart. They never paired with each other and instead chose the smart kids to basically do the test for them. We got through it, me answering every question and we turned it in. After the test, we were allowed to work on our monthly projects, i.e. Rube Goldberg, mouse trap car, wooden bridge, etc. At the time, we were working on a mouse trap car and was nearly done, a week ahead of the due date, when I finally got started testing different wheels and pull arm links. Things were going smoothly when Chad came over and asked for helpful advice. Basically just wanted to copy my design and use it for himself. Me. Yeah, I get it. Just use two computer CDs and a long copper rod for the pull arm, and it'll get a B at least. Chad. Yeah, I don't really know how to put it together. Could you just do it for me? I was not surprised, but instead of doing as he asked, I thought about showing him how to do it himself. He basically just scoffed at the idea of doing actual work. Chad. Just do it or I'll F your sister, you little sea stain. So I did it, knowing that he would retaliate and probably hurt me or my sister. I was peeved and scared, but it was whatever until a week later. The trials were started, then they ended. I got an A, but Chad got a C. He was furious. Part of me thinks that the teacher knew what had happened and altered his grade, due to Chad doing this before, but it came with a brutal retaliation. He jumped me later and gave me a black eye, two lacerations on my face that thankfully didn't require stitches, and a torn earlobe. Ouch. I didn't dare report him to the police or a school advisor because I knew it could be worse. Later. I healed after a few weeks, but I swore if I ever saw him again, he would regret everything. Now you know I wouldn't be posting here if we never met again. Little did I know it would be six years later. The Encounter Time went on. Years went by. I secured a job with a security company after my associate's degree and make decent money. I mainly deal with truck drivers 95% of the time and have only written three major incident reports in the four years I've worked there. Day was normal. No problems, until enter Chad. I didn't know at the moment he came in, but it was him 100%. I found out after he handed me his license. I knew because he had this one for three years, obviously expired, and I remembered his putrid, disgusting bile face. The memories came back. I hadn't thought about Chad in years. To be honest, I forgot he even existed until that day. He came in, didn't recognize me, and I took care of him like anyone else, except he has to come back to me when he leaves with his outbound trailer. So I planned. I thought of what I could do to make him remember me, to make him hurt like I did. Now I graduated with a degree for criminal justice, so I have a pretty good understanding about laws and regulations in my state. And since his license is expired, I thought I could use that to my advantage. So I basically told Chad what trailer to pick up and where it was. He went and grabbed it and brought it back to me. Me. Hey, sorry, but I gave you the wrong trailer. We're using that one later to fill a load, and the site manager just called me about it. He gave me one of those really, god you're wasting my time looks that I get all the time. Chad. 
Look, man, I'm almost out hours and I need to get it out of here. Can't they just reassign it? Me. No, unfortunately, once the trailer's assigned, blah blah security talk. I told him he needed to go get a different one instead. This was true and not part of my plan, but I rolled with it. He kept nagging about how it'll get him fired if he doesn't take his break on time, that he's already on his dispatcher's watch list. I loved when he told me this. I was going to do whatever I could to make him waste as much time as possible, so I called our yard dog, YD, a driver on site who moves trailers in and out of docked doors, and told him a driver was refusing to drop their trailer, that he needs to be escorted off the property. The YD came and stopped in front of his tractor so he couldn't move forward, and told him to unhook immediately. For a second he waited outside of his truck yelling obscenities and stuff. Eventually the YD and myself went into the guard shack in case he got violent. Chad. F this. Big mistake. Chad jumped back in his truck, drove around the YDs when he was in my guard shack, and left as fast as he could. I was already on the phone with my supervisor and he told me to call the police. Trailer theft is a felony in my state. So I did, told them the tractor number, his name, and a description, along with the trailer he had and his general direction of travel. About an hour went by before I had a police cruiser show up and asking for me. He questioned me on the whole who, what, when, where, and how. He told me that he was caught up to eventually and was arrested. They needed me as a witness and to make a statement for their report, so I made sure to mention myself noticing his expired license and everything else. To the best of my knowledge, Chad will be getting at least a year of prison time, as felonies are a one-year minimum, and fired from his trucking company. Granted, I technically just did my job, but I made sure to be as detailed as possible and make sure he pays for what he did to me all those years ago. I hope to have updates when the trial comes around, if it ever happens, but the officer told me for the most part my statement should be enough for them, and I might not even have to go to court. But I sincerely hope I get to. I'd love to see his face when the judge slaps a sentence and reminds him of the past, and what he did to me. Edit. To clarify for those asking about the part, this was true and not part of my plan, but I rolled with it. I told him to get a trailer for his company, but was going to later tell him that the trailer was damaged and needed to be repaired, and since he's hooked up to it that he would have to wait for a repair vehicle, thus making him late for his break, getting him hopefully fired, or at least wasting his time. But my soup actually called me and told me the trailer was in fact pre-assigned to a load, and was supposed to be moved into a dock door. Essentially, he got himself arrested in a way. The next story is, your only working area would be the changing room. Now this happened a few years back but I still remember it clear as day, as it was the first time I caused this much trouble during work. I was a part-time retail assistant for a retail clothing store, a rather popular one at that, but I won't state its brand name here. During the holidays it was quite common for customers to ask for different sizes for the items on display. The usual protocol would be for me to call for someone to take the item, go to the cashier and use the machine there to check whether the item had that particular size, or if any of the other local stores around this area had them. Note that there was a rule that there had to be someone working in the changing room at all times. As an employee that had worked there for a month, I already knew that most of the time no one really followed this rule as we were understaffed. So when someone asked for me to check for the size they wanted on the item, I would leave the changing room and take no more than a minute to check it. The customers didn't mind, nor did my other colleagues. The problem only came when the HR team came to do a sudden check the other day to ensure that we were working as per protocols. As luck had it, they saw me leaving the changing room whenever someone asked if an item had a particular size, and told my head manager that I was breaking the protocol literally every 5 minutes. My head manager was not happy. She paid for me and told me, your only working area would be the changing room. Do not move from that area. I couldn't even explain myself. Alright then, for the next few weeks or so, customers were not attended to because I could only answer, sorry, I can't check for you. This also meant that close to none of the customers were buying anything. Head manager didn't notice because she was always busy in the back room doing admin work and was never on the ground floor. Earnings report came for the month and my god there were only 2,000 plus worth of sales completed. This was 5 times lesser than the revenue we usually generated. We managed to get the best performing local store award from the bottom. The head manager was unable to explain herself and tried to compensate by hiring new employees. This did not work since I couldn't leave my post and none of the other employees dared to leave their post as well which also meant none of them knew how to use the machine to check for sizes. They were all religiously folding and refolding clothes again to look useful, but no actual sales were being made. Well, it didn't come as a surprise when the head manager was fired, and HR decided that having an employee staying in the changing room at all times was a stupid rule as well. Edit. Disclaimer. I may have gotten the numbers entirely wrong, but I remember our store was doing five times worse than how we usually did though. The last story is... 
Clueless Regional Manager Has Great Idea I worked at a newer car rental company at a major international airport in the Midwest. I worked in the car return lane. The majority of my time was spent checking in customers and making sure they hadn't messed up the cars. We'd made sure the keys were in the cars and then write some info on the windows for the cleaners, which were constantly taking cars. I came back from a weekend and found the regional manager had rolled in. He was a nice guy but was all about saving money and had no clue what was going on. He fired two of the actual managers for dubious reasons, and so would fly in every other week to help run the place. Either the cleaners had lost one too many keys, which happens because the company has a fleet of 600 plus cars, or one of the other branches did things differently. Anyway, he had decided that to prevent the loss of keys and supposedly theft, we, the return agents, were to have the keys on us at all times. Everyone at the branch immediately opposed this idea. Us return agents did a lot of tasks beside checking in customers. We helped with luggage, moved cars, did quality checks, updated the computer system, etc. When my coworker told me this, I was miffed and was like, that's stupid, I'm not doing that. He shrugged his shoulders maliciously but carelessly and was like, I know, just do it and watch what happens. I quickly picked up on the collective frustration of everyone and realized no one was complaining. Everyone had just decided to maliciously comply. It was a nightmare. The cleaners were constantly having to come find us and describe what car they wanted, and we'd have to get the key off of a massive carbiner, taking needed time from us and the cleaners. I was also sure to be extra slow and inconvenienced at the thought of having to find a key for a cleaner. Oh, do I have the key you guys have been looking for the past five minutes? I'm sorry, let me take a slow walk back to the return lane. Oh, that isn't the right key? Oops. The return lane quickly became an unorganized mess of cars and started overflowing out of the lot. Customers were extra stressed because they couldn't leave, as the lot was jammed up. Shuttles couldn't come in to pick people up. The cleaners were yelling at us and running all over the place. But we just shrugged our shoulders as the cleaners and said this ain't our fault, complained to management. A few customers observed the chaos and me and my coworker like, oh yeah, this is kind of normal, you know? Chaos was normal at this place, but not like this. I think at one point that day, someone radioed and was like, just leave the keys in the car for the rest of the day. But the next day we were again instructed to take the keys and the regional manager acknowledged that change was hard, but this would be a new policy. So again we complied. The cleaners hated their life and I'm sure they complained. Things were like this for a few more days, then the regional manager left for the week. I came in the next day and I was not surprised to find that keys were in cars again. I checked with my coworker and he confirmed that we were back on the old efficient system. The manager in training had okayed it. When the regional manager came back next week he didn't mention anything about reverting back to our old efficient ways. Hit the like button and subscribe to the channel. Have a good day.